I choose a male narrator almost exclusively for a reason. Why do you think? Women! (laughs) (laughs) They want to hear you. They want to go to sleep with your voice. They want to throw panties at you because you have that voice. We'd already lost one engine. Given the sputtering noises filling the cabin, it wouldn't be long until we lost the second. We were heading into no man's land. A part of Alaska where wilderness and wildlife had a strong hold, mountains looming only a few miles away. If we crashed into the side of one of them, we'd be toast, obliterated within seconds. All I could hope for was that the pilot was skilled in emergency operations, able to control the plane long enough to find a semi-clear passage. That was like rolling a dice in hell. What is happening? the woman asked from behind me. Piper Stone, you're in yes. Virginia? Yes. Yep. What can you tell me about Virginia? I don't think I've been there. You need to come here. Yeah. Virginia is one of those states that has a little bit of everything. We have yeah. the ocean. We have mountains. We have lakes, rivers, streams. We have lots of greenery. No fires, really. <laughs> Which is, okay. Are, it might be one of those states that are left that um, actually isn't wiped off the face of the map. Okay, so it's nice. And how are your dogs? They're wonderful. Just wonderful. <laughs> They've got some great names, your dogs. Yeah. Well, I would hope you would know them, or maybe I'm dating myself, but Indiana Jones. Yeah. You know that one. Yeah. Okay, Magnum P.I. Yeah. Okay, Remington Steel. Which was Piers Brosnan's uh, yeah. big break, yeah. wasn't it? Really? Uh, and they're golden retrievers. Yes. Have you always lived in Virginia? Uh, no, born in Ohio, lived in Florida, um, but then back to Virginia. Just as you know, it's just a good state to live. And was it a, was it a husband that took you to Virginia? Because my wife's a New Zealander and she lives in England now because I'm British, so I ruined her life. You know, it, was it that situation for you? Uh, no, no, no. I was from here. Well, in a sense. I was already here and um, working and et cetera, et cetera. So, no, he's the one that I probably brought more than anything. He's originally from Tucson. Okay, from Arizona. Yes. Yeah. I've, I spent about five minutes, maybe three minutes in Arizona. Another yeah. state. It's really nice. <laughs> you need to <laughs> spend some more time here. I was, I, was, uh, I was in Las Vegas for a radio convention, and we, we, drove, we rented a car, and we drove out to the Hoover Dam. And when you walk across the dam the other side, you're briefly in Arizona. You're at, the, the border yeah. between Nevada and Arizona is on the dam. So that was, that's the closest I got to, <laughs> to going to Arizona. You missed out. Florida I've been to, as most British people have. Uh, a lot of British people go on holiday to, to Florida. In fact, I've got an uncle that lives in St. Petersburg. So, yeah, Florida, well, Virginia, I don't know. Yeah, Virginia is very nice. I mean, seriously, Florida is crowded. Virginia, especially where I live, it's like living in a little country and the um, capital of the state is just basically right around the corner. Right. Okay. So nice then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as a kid growing up, which would have been in, where would you, which was your growing up state? Because you, you told me about Florida. Where was you? Ohio. Ohio. So you're growing up in Ohio, which I've been to. I've been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. A lot yeah. of my relatives are there and my entire family are musicians. So that's an important place. Oh, one of the coolest things I saw in that museum was John Lennon's passport. Because you get a passport when you're 16 and you have it for 10 years. So it's basically John Lennon from age 16 to age 26. So the photograph in the passport, he's got his hair piled high because he's 16 and he looks like a 50s rocker, you know? And that's, that's cool. the one he that's the one he took to Hamburg with them. But then of course they toured the world as the mop tops, but his passport photo still looked like that. And it goes through all and the Beatles stopped touring in 66, which was the exact 
was the the the, the ten years he got it in fifty six, and and it, it ran out in sixty six. So it actually covers all the Beatles tours, and that was every page was open in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. So it's a lovely museum. It's really nice. We're getting off the topic though. We need to be talking yes. about writing books and about the audio book that I've done for you, which is Primal Instinct. But your background yeah. of writing. What were you influenced by? What were you reading as a kid in Ohio? Honestly, um, the one thing I think you'll notice about my books is I like the thriller portion of it. I like that, and too. And the reason for that is that I grew up reading Stephen King. You did? Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I was big horror. I was big into, you know, all of that kind of thing. And then it kind of went from there to Bentley Little and... Um, oh my gosh, so many others. I mean, I've got a lot of books back here that are, are some of the ones I used to read. Um, and that's really what started it. And I think that's, I guess, carried itself through most of my books over the years is I can't just write a basic love story, girl meets boy, boy, they fall in love and, you know, life goes on. Yeah. Boring. <laughs> so... Yeah, well, just, one of the things I liked about the book was because I thought it was going to be a romance book with a bit of an edge, but it was a full-on thriller as well. Who do you think it would appeal more to, fans of romance or fans of thrillers? Uh, and I hate to say it this way, but I think fans of thriller books, while they can tolerate a little bit of romance, I mean, even Clive Cussler had romance in his books, let's face it, but not too much. <laughs> you know, for them, they want that full embodiment of a thriller. But I do think a lot of romance author, or readers, they really do want a little bit of something different. Yeah. You can read about the same romance all the time, and it might have a little something special. But what about throwing a little danger, a little, you know, exasperation of what they have to deal with into it? And I honestly think that. So I attract that. Now, granted, my readers kind of know that I'm a bit different. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you take me or not, but I think that actually uh, it matters for me, and I couldn't do it any other way. So when did you start writing? I was five. You were five? What kind of stuff were you writing at five? And uh, back then, I, I'm not sure I'd want to remember five, but... By the time I was 14, um, I was writing full-length novels, and believe it or not, they were science fiction because wow. it was influenced from, I'm dating myself, Star Wars. Okay. So, <laughs> um, and I liked that, and I really got a kick out of it. And I even sent some in um, back when it was, you sent the hard copy in, and yeah. you, know, you waited for the 18 months to hear anything back and then get the rejection letter, <laughs> you know. But I'd written... 16 of them by the time I was 15. Full-length novels. Full-length novels. And I still have a few of them. They maintained all these years. Wow. And then, yeah. that, but you ended up working as a, a community association manager. Oh, you've been checking up on me. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, what is that and how has it inspired your writing? Because every influence is going to be in your writing. <laughs> okay. Here's the truth to it, and it's 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 really, I don't know if it influenced it or I was kind of forced to accept that really what I was was an author. But, but what, is a, what is a community association manager first? Yeah. Okay. For what it is, is I'm sure you guys have what are called planned communities over there where a uh -huh. developer does a community and it's a section of pretty little houses or condominiums that all maybe either look alike, they're grouped together. Something like that. Uh -huh. You guys have them? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Housing developments, yeah. 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 And so it's developers here, in a sense, are required when they do a new development to put this together as an association with rules and regulations. You pay fees uh, monthly, yearly, whatever it is. So, <clears throat> of course, you're going to need somebody to corral that because... <laughs> There's an awful lot of people that don't want to follow the rules or ignore them, haven't read them when they signed on the dotted line to move in. They need to pay their dues. How are they going to get collected? How's the grass going to get cut? How are the windows going to get cleaned, the snow? So 
I t used to take care of all those services. You know, I was the one that made sure that all the little pieces, parts got done, all the contractors did what they were supposed to, that the board of directors, which every association has, followed the rules in order to make governing decisions for their their folks. Um, it is not a happy world. Oh, really? <laughs> not remotely. Um, if I can say this on podcasts, it sucks. <laughs> right, <laughs> it <just> yes. Sucks. <laughs> right. And you meet some very entitled people, and that's just the sad truth about it. Okay. So the reason that I quit that was um, a little bit more forced than I had intended. Right. The true story is I took a job, and I'll try not to make this too long, as a community association manager for a very large community, about 2,500 homes, pools, tennis courts, huge staff, the whole thing. Within less than a month of me being there, there was a local newspaper <clears throat> that got a hold of it. And realized I was a writer, not as Piper Stone. I've changed my name. Okay. And decided to put it on the front page of the paper. How scathing it was for a community association manager to be an erotic author. Ah, what? What business is it of theirs? Well, that would be my point. But as I sat in board meetings that started having 50, 100, 150 people in the audience who would stand up calling me names like porn star and the killer of women and all this garbage, um, it became evident that it was going to haunt me. And it did. Right. Uh, eventually, I lost that job, and I tried to find a job literally, and I'm not exaggerating, anywhere else in the country. <laughs> Nobody would hire me. Guess what? Because the article stood. Right, so when they researched you, that's what always came up. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but how does it even affect your ability to be a community association manager? How did they make th that connection? What's that all about? It's just prejudice, isn't it? Well, yeah. And, you know, if you want to know some ugly little truths about the United States, it's a little more conservative than they want to let on. <laughs> right. Okay. So you have a lot of conservative folks that think it's terrible. Now, meanwhile, they have Fifty Shades of Grey yeah. in their little, you know, desk drawer or something, or yeah. by their bed. But you know, yeah. it was hard for me, so it ruined right. the career. Also, so, but what about the the free right. the free speech parts of the Constitution? Doesn't the, I don't doesn't know that? how to? I really, honestly, don't know how to explain it. It was like saying that I was doing something illegal, and and I just. I, it, and the funny thing is, it really got to me. I let it get to me, and that's not my personality. Yeah. But then when you can't put food on the table or pay your bills, and, and you're looking at foreclosure on your home, you know, you have to dig in and do something else. So I said, to heck with it. I'll just use what destroyed me <laughs> and turn it around. I see. So and so like, how many books have you published so far? Actual hard hard books, not, not just audio books. Um, as Piper Stone or as all my other personas? Total. Yeah, total. Total. Um, and I hate to say this, but I've lost count. Over 350. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you're really a well-established author and a piece of the, a piece of the framework of, of the writing community. I mean, wow, that is, uh, that's a serious amount of books. Wow. Yeah. So how is the, to get back to the second part of my question, how was working as a community association manager. How has that inspired your writing? Well, there's nothing better, A, since I kill people in a lot of my books, <laughs> than remembering certain people and allowing that to come through. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not kidding. Um, secondly, it, it gave you a lot of character data for all kinds of people, whether it's government folks or landscapers or, you know, you name it. I probably met somebody in the Senate and Congress. I mean, that's the kind of people I associated with. And it, gave, it really does give you an excellent understanding of people. A lot of it not good. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, 
I can use those various things. And I think it helps uh, versus just doing research on the Internet. Yeah. So that's where you'll get your ideas for certain conflicts within stories will be from real life examples. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Th that is the the ultimate definition of the creative process is taking all your influences and having them come out. I can relate yeah. to the the people you don't like. I've often narrated books where there are baddies in them and they're old radio bosses of mine. And I just <laughs> I just do an impression of them because I go, this sounds a lot like a certain bloke who shafted me or, uh, you know, isn't and I'll just, fun? I'll do it as him. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's, it's yeah, the ultimate fun. revenge. Uh, and certain people oh. I know who've worked for th this one particular person and uh, I've told them that he's in these books. He's in a lot of them, actually. He's not in yours, but, um, yeah, he's in, he's a Scotsman. Otherwise he would be in your book. I tell you. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. You might give me some ideas though. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about your book. Now it's now it is a thriller, uh, but it's a love story as well between between Parker and Ruger. And and Parker, she's pretty badass herself, isn't she? Where where does she where does where does her character come from? <laughs> well, I guess a lot of people say when they write that a lot of their characters come from some of their personality. Yes. Mm, yeah, I'm I'm kind of an aggressive person <laughs> mm -hmm. so um i don't take a lot of crap and anybody if like you reached out on the internet you'll tell them she's gonna stand up and say mm -mm. <laughs> yeah that's part of it i don't like writing weak characters secondly i think you just think of you know uh, people that really have this passion for nature yeah. And for the, you know, what's going on in the world. And I think that's where I wanted to take that a little bit, even though, you know, they're not swimming around with the dolphins or anything. But it was important to kind of bring that out. Yeah. I, I don't want to give too much away about the book, but she she uh, she, she she gets involved with um, trying to expose a corporation for doing some pretty nasty stuff. But she puts yep. herself at risk. And this is almost like a side story to the the love story that that develops between her and Ruger. Now mm -hmm. Ruger, in for a lot of the book, he's he's misunderstood, and and there's a whole quest for justice kind of a a, a thread through it as well. Where, where does his character come from? Because honestly, the the bottom line is I've always been out for the little guy. Yeah. You know, you can hurt me, and you can say anything you want. I don't yeah. care. But if you come back after somebody I care about, forget it. Forget yeah. it. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. just the way that it is. Yeah. Um, I, I liked both of the characters. Uh, I thought they were really well-rounded and they were fun to play I in the book as Good. well. Yeah. Oh, they were. And, uh, yeah. And it was, it was one of, one of the many books I've done where, where I was American throughout the book, as both both of the characters are. I don't think there are any British characters in the book. They're all American, so I was American through the through the whole book, and it was fun, it was really fun to do. And, good, uh, I'm glad. Yeah, some some twists, a, a really good villain. Um, yeah, lots of twists and, and lots of jeopardy, and and a lot of because you know he had his best friend there, and he didn't know whether he was on his side or not. Like I said, I don't want to give too much away, but there is there is there are many. <laughs> Layers to the book. It's not just a simple thriller, you know, uh, you know, it's surviving through uh, adversity. And it's not a simple love story. It, it's it's quite complicated and it, it takes a lot of twists and turns. And uh, no, it's a terrific book. How did you find the process of turning the book into an audio book? Um, as far as working with you or just... Yeah, how, how did that do? work out? Because you, well, you must have done audio books before. Yeah, you have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So how, how did it how did it work out for you? Well, audio has been a love and hate relationship. <laughs> really? <laughs> what's been the issue? What's well? Tell me about the hate in the audio books, okay. and tell me what's gone wrong. Sadly, there are a lot of narrators who are flakes. <laughs> who, who are flakes? Yeah. And in, in what way? What they don't they don't deliver the audio on time, or or what? Well, there's some of that, but. Often that can be explained. I mean, we're humans. Yeah. You know, a sickness or, and especially when you're an, a narrator, your voice matters. <laughs> so yeah. if you have laryngitis, that might yeah. be a problem. Yeah. So it's not that. It's, it's more that I try to convey that 
the romance, and I said this to you, so yeah. you can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> it's the romance business is different. It's different than selling a thriller. And the reason it's different is women like to hear from the narrators. I choose a male narrator almost exclusively for a reason. Why do you think? Women! <laughs> They want to hear you. They want to go to sleep with your voice. They want to throw panties at you because you have that voice. Okay? It's <laughs> just the bottom line. <laughs> and I've tried to convey that, and I think I told you something like yes, that. Yes, you did. Yes. Yeah. You got a flu. You right. gotta just be a presence to a point. I mean, I'm not talking about being stupid or or, or doing something that is against your beliefs or any of that. But all you have to do is say sometimes hi and say, I've got a sexy little Z for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> They'll eat it up. Right. And that I want to make them happy. Yeah. And that's that's the difference. And some of these guys are so rigid and and uh, no, I'm not talking about you, believe it or not. They're so rigid that they just don't, you can tell in the book that when they read it, it's just like this. <laughs> God, I'm reading this. It's just terrible. <laughs> and so they'll either disappear or not follow any of my suggestions. And it just gets frustrating because um, the key is to help sell the book. Absolutely. It's about, it's about selling the books. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it just takes a special something to do that, you know, and you either have that that verve that that reaches out even beyond the pages or or beyond what you've narrated, or you don't. And it's just a necessity in the kinds of books that we do. That's good to know. so so what is next for Piper Stone then? what's what's as coming far up? as books or audio everything, or... yeah, everything. What's coming up? Well, um, A, I'm, uh, a lot of the books are being translated into German right now. Why particularly which, German? Is that a, a big market for, for American huge. books? Huge. Wow. And here's the funny thing. You're going to get a kick out of this. Something about you English folks, you hate me. <laughs> you absolutely hate me. Really? Oh my God. It's, it's, it's hysterical. Canada well, you're talking about me. English women here, not, not blokes. Surely. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, get your women to like me. Okay. Really? It's, yeah. German for some reason with translations, all seriousness. Mm -hmm. It's just an excellent market. Um, Italy's probably next. Okay. What about the French? The, the you know, no. Paris is the city of, no, they don't. Uh... No, you, you know that. French don't like us very much. So. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe that's a bigger issue than the than the books. Yeah, yeah it's 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 just a thing. Okay, <laughs> well, the book is a terrific book. It's called Primal Instinct. It's by Piper Stone. It's now available as an audio book, and I was honored yes. to be selected as the narrator to narrate the audio book. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll notice in the blurb down below. I mean, that's my. Uh, website address but in the actual blurb uh, for the book you'll see my email address which is graham at macmedia.co.uk or .co.uk but if you can't remember that go into that blurb and if you click on that and ask me for a free book the next 10 people who do that I will send you codes that will let you download the audio book for, uh, for Primal Instinct and it'll be free It'd be nice if you like it and you leave a nice review, but it's up to you. But if you'd like to get the audio book for free, just go on there into that little blurb there. Uh, it's just uh, it's just my email address, and and I'll send the next ten people that do that. I'll send you uh, codes to get Primal Instinct by Piper Stone for free. Piper Stone, thank you so much for choosing me as your narrator for this one. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading the book. Um, it's a it's good. a terrific book. It's a no. It's a really is a it really is a, a a really good gripping read that never lets up. I mean, the, there's action on every page or something happening with the story on every page. It is, it is just great. Great to talk to you. Continued success. One day I hope I'll visit Virginia 
and uh, maybe I'll come and bother you. Uh, Were you better? The dogs a <laughs> <laughs> Five for Stone, thank you. Thank you so much. I really loved it.